Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to append tables together that have mismatched column names. Not only mismatched column names, but mismatched column orders. So here I have a different worksheets, and within these worksheets are tables that I want to append together or combine. And we can see that for my first table here, uh, the one that is uh, 2007-0101, this is going to be the preferred output that I want. I want an ID column and a quantity column in this order. That's first, that's second, and with those names. I'll minimize this now. The second one I want, let me just write the second table that I have here, has something similar, but it's got this first column as domain, and it's got my ID columns and quantity columns, but they have an S at the end. And I don't want it like that. I want it to have an ID and quantity without the S. First column, second column. So I want to append that table with my first one. Minimize that. The third one we have here is something similar. But the first column is right. It's my product ID column, but I don't need that product word in there. I just need ID and quantity spelled out. I don't need quantity spelled out. I just need QTY. But it's got a third column region, and I don't need that. So how do we combine all these particular files together with just having an ID column and quantity column calling them the same thing. Well, first we would need to have some kind of helper table that makes that conversion. So as I said previously before, we had the ID and the quantity with an S. I want to rename, I want to map those to the correct names, ID and quantity. Also with my third file that I showed with that table, we had product ID and quantity, but I don't need that product and quantity. I don't need spelled out. I just want to map it to ID and quantity. So this is a helper table. And this will help later on too, because what will happen is maybe we get other files that have similar type of names that we don't want that particular format. We just want this ID and quantity. And this helper table will solve it for us. So let's see how we do this. First, we're going to bring this into Power Query, go to Data, from Table and Range, and it's going to bring up the Create Table window. My table does have headers. These are the headers before and after. Click OK, and the Power Query editor will come up. Let's make this a little bit smaller so we can view this. Now, what I need to do, I'll just call this something, give it some kind of a helpful name, header, underscore, convert and load this as a connection only. Click close and load. I'm going to create a only connection. Click OK. This will load it into my Power Query as a connection only query. Now I want to bring in my other files and it'll be a little bit different. I'm going to bring it in as a folder. So go under data, from file, and from folder. And it will let me browse for the folder which I'll... Here's the folder path I have for those three files. Click OK. and Power Query is going to bring up a window where I can do my combination here or transform the data. You can see that it's got the other files here because they're open. That's why we have that tilde in file name. What I want to do is go to combine and transform data because I need to combine that data and also do some transformation files. Now what you'll notice is Power Query is going to look for a first file as your sample file to do that transformation. It's going to look for the first file that it finds and if I click here, I usually would want to select the file that I want as a sample file that is going to be my ideal um, output. This one is the one with three columns. I didn't want the ID. I didn't want the quantity spelled out. So I'm going to look for that file. And that, that file was called 2007-0101. Click on my sheet one. So it shows me that table from that first that file that I want as a sample. So this will become kind of a template to be used to transform the other files when we combine them together. So I'll click OK. And it's going to, let's close this. It's going to process the queries and we'll have the query editor open. And we're going to have to do some changes to that file. But you can see it's done all these other transformations. It's created a param parameter sample file. It's going to bring the sample, it's going to use my sample file that I selected earlier. It's going to transform it and have the output. This is the one that we need to change, this query here. Because now, based on this, it's 
given us our output. This is our data output. This is what it's actually done. It's tried to, it tried to combine everything based on this sample file, this transform sample file. So you can see that it didn't really combine them well. And what I want to do is I want to change this now. I'm going to do some transformations here. And what we need to do is we're going to put in a index column. So I'll go to add column. Index column will start from zero. And you can see we have our index column here. After this, we will unpivot the other column. So right click, go to unpivot other columns. And you notice that it's done some grouping. Now this is where we're going to have our, our helper table here. And here we're going to merge this table here with that other table that we created, right? The other table that was called um, header underscore convert. Pull this back here. So go to home, merge queries, and I'm going to merge this query with the other query, and I'm going to merge it based on this column. We, and we're going to merge that with the header convert with this column. So I will merge this column with this column. And any time it sees these particular names or these values, it's going to give me the ID quantity. It's going to do a lookup in a way. So I'm going to click OK and expand this. If I click on here, you'll notice that it's empty, right? Because it's done that it's done that look up here. It's done the look up here. It's empty because these are the correct ways I want it named. But in case there is a misname, I want to change it. And to do that, what we're going to do is expand that column. I'll keep the before. I'll keep the after, and uh, I'll keep that. That's fine because I'm going to change it later on. Click OK, and now we have these nulls. Here now, what I'll need to do is I'll need to create a add another column and do some if statements. So this is going to be a conditional column. Click on that, and here we'll say that if that convert that after column equals null, which in this instance it does because it's it's we've got our correct values here. If that's null then just bring those values back. So I'm going to bring those values back in my attribute column That was because that was the name of that column there. right? So that's that name of the column there. And if it's not null, we want to bring back our after column, right? Because then it found out the values that should change. So I'll click OK. And you notice that nothing uh, really changes here, but it brings back that ID column. Right? So there's our logic there, right? So we have if this is null, bring back that ID. If it's not null, bring back whatever shows up here. It's going to be transformative for the other files because, as you recall, an example was one of the files had IDs and quantities with an S, and it should bring back ID and quantity. And it will bring those back here, and it will reflect in this custom column. So what I need to do now is I'll just remove this column and that column because I don't need them anymore. So Control, select that column, select this column, right click, and then remove. So since we unpivoted earlier, let's pivot this back. So we unpivoted early. Let's pivot this column back. So I'll go under transform. And it should be one of these icons here. Let's see. That says pivot, right? If I expand this out, you could probably see it a little bit better. Yes. So I'll click on pivot. And we're going to pivot based on our values column. And also with these advanced options, I don't want it to count. I don't want it to do anything, but I don't want it to I don't want it to count or count not all blank. I don't want it to do anything. I don't want it to aggregate. So click on that option, click OK, and now we have our values back here. And this seems like nothing really happened when you think about it because this is the sample file. This is the one that we wanted. But I didn't need this index column anymore, so I'm just going to right click, remove, and we have our sample file that's been transformed with all these steps. And now you'll notice if I go into my data, this was the one earlier where it didn't have everything all nicely tied up in an ID column and quantity column. Everything is tied up nicely now. You, and you'll also notice that my other source files, that 2007-01-03 and 2007-01-02, they're there with the correct ID header and quantity header and all the records in there. I'll load this into the worksheet, click close and load. I think by default, this will probably put it into a new worksheet here. And we can see that's done here. So to see if this worked well, if I change things, let's say I went into um, 2007-01-03 and changed some things in here and made it obvious. So let's go to, to that file. All right, let's pretend that 
we we'll add this one. We'll we'll double we'll we'll duplicate that. Control C to copy, Control V to paste, and we'll give this one one thousand, the ID one thousand, and make this really obvious quantity one. We'll also make that one thousand, and region. Let's we'll just make something up three, right? And we'll add employee ID. I'll just call E ID, and just make up some numbers here. Use the random number generator. I ran between, and we'll make just make something up here, 1,000 to 2,000. Control Enter to enter it in all for those cells. Control C to copy and just paste those as the values. I don't want that formula the, there, so I'll just paste just the values there. So the formulas are gone. All right, save this and close this file. This one should show up now. This one with 1,000, and also this column will not be there because all I wanted was the ID column and quantity column. Minimize that. And let's refresh and see if it shows up in one of the records here. So right click, refresh, and we have it here. It shows up, right? It didn't include that employee ID column. We had just our ID and quantity column, and it shows up with this new ID. So that's the way that we can combine files together that have mismatched names and also mismatched columns, things that are maybe we don't want there. We only wanted the ID column and quantity column. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.